The least amount of cards you can play in a Yu-Gi-Oh deck is 40, but some players over the course of time have found draw spells to sort of decrease the deck size of their strategy. One of the cards that was super popular was Upstart Goblin. This card was at three copies for a long time, and people played all three copies in their 37 quote-unquote decks. And this is pretty good, by the way. I've made an entire video about it. I'll link it in the description below if I remember. But basically, the main reason is that by playing three copies of Upstart Goblin, you had a less than 40 card deck, which gave you a higher chance to draw the better, more powerful cards in your strategy. And I know that can be confusing to some people because a card like Upstart Goblin is better than a card like Jar of Greed, even though they look very similar, but Jar of Greed being a trap card meant it was just way too slow, but at the very least with Upstart Goblin all the time you can activate it with almost no drawback because the 1000 life points really don't matter in most situations, so that it gave you a little bit of a consistency boost over the course of many rounds in a longer tournament. And even at one copy per deck, which is where it's been at for a few formats now, it still sees competitive success. Just having that one last card in your deck is super helpful for a variety of strategies that need a slight consistency boost to sort of make their combos happen on the first turn. But some players want to take it one step further because we don't have three copies of Upstar Goblin, but you still can technically sort of get a 36 card deck if you really want to. The card we're talking about in today's video is Into the Void, a very similar card to Upstar Goblin, although clearly not as ubiquitous, right? This card is not being played in every single deck because it does have a more significant downside compared to Upstart, but it is still seeing play right now in three very competitive strategies that have a bunch of recent tops that I want to talk about in today's video. Should you play Into the Void? Well, hopefully today's video will help explain or answer that question for whatever deck or strategy you might come up with. And if you guys would like to purchase Into the Void or any other Yu-Gi-Oh cards for your collection, make sure to use my link in the description below to tcgplayer.com. I really appreciate it when you guys use that because a portion of those sales go right back into the channel. Into the Void is a normal spell card with the following effects and drawbacks. It says, if you have three or more cards in your hand, draw one card, and if you do, during the end phase of this turn, discard your entire hand. So yes, this has some big drawbacks compared to Upstart Goblin. We have two, in fact. Instead of giving your opponent a thousand life points, you have to have three cards in your hand to activate this thing at all, and also, during the end phase, you lose all the cards that are left in your hand and those seem pretty big and they certainly are and what might surprise a lot of people is that some of the times the biggest drawback of Into the Void is that first drawback that you have to have three or more cards in your hand to activate it. Please keep in mind here that you don't have to have three cards and the Into the Void. As long as the Into the Void is in your hand you only need to have two other cards. So as long as you have two cards and in Into the Void you can activate the Into the Void right from your hand but of course keep in mind this doesn't work that way if the Into the Void is already set to the field. It just so happens that for the effect to resolve, you don't actually have to have three cards in hand. It's only the activation condition, so just keep that in mind when you're using the card. So where did this card see play before right now? Well, in the past, uh, back in a couple of years ago, when we had Cliff Forts with Towers Turbo, a few of those topping deck lists did in fact play three copies of Into the Void, for a very similar reason to many of the decks that we're going to talk about in today's video. The general use of Into the Void is pretty similar to Upstart Goblin, it just can't fit into as many decks as Upstart could because of these two big drawbacks. Namely, the end phase drawback is huge, and I know some people might say, well, you can combo it with some graveyard effects like Dark World Monsters or Burning Abyss Monsters. And while I see where you're coming from, and I understand the surface level analysis that a card that would discard your hand would interact with cards that have graveyard abilities, please keep in mind here that while that might come up a few times over the course of a tournament, the general reason that this card is seen play is in decks that want more consistency and can't find it elsewhere. You are playing this card to have a smaller deck. If you play it in combination with Upstar Goblin, you actually have a 36 card deck, which I kind of mentioned a few minutes ago. And you'll kind of see that as we go through the three most successful decks that are currently playing into the void, you'll notice that only one of them really has any graveyard effects that they would want to trigger. The biggest thing to remember here is that all the decks that are playing into the void really can't afford to play hand traps alongside of it. That is one of the biggest downsides is that if you have any cards in your hand during the end phase, you have to discard them. So all three of the decks follow the same sort of pattern, even though all three of them are very different strategies. None of them actually need to have any hands at the end of their first turn. They put all of their cards onto the field and make a really big, scary board. So first up, I want to talk about Lunalite Orcus, because Jesse Cotton won the UDS in Panama a few weeks ago with Lunalite Orcus, and he was playing not only one copy of Upstar Goblin, but also, obviously, because we're talking about it, three copies of Into the 
the void. And as even Jesse pointed out in his profile, it's kind of different for him to play those types of cards because if you've seen some of his past topping and tournament winning deck lists, a lot of the times that we've seen him have success, he actually played more than 40 cards. We've seen him play 45 cards and even 50 cards pretty recently, just a few months ago. But with Lunalay Orcus in particular, he said it was so important to open Tiger and Kaleido check that he wanted to play as few cards as possible. And that really did show in his deck profile because he played so many deck thinning cards just to make his combos work. And if you look at his main deck, there were no hand traps in the entire thing and not even really that many hand traps in the side deck as well. So the Into the Void drawback really never came up in that way. And that's one of the things that you'll notice with all three of these decks is that none of them actually play hand traps. But even beyond that, pretty much every single card in his deck wants to be in the graveyard. It's actually pretty insane when you look at that deck list because not only do the monsters want to be in the graveyard, but also many of these spells and traps do too. So that's really cool because it means if the Into the Void actually does have to discard a couple cards during the end phase, maybe he didn't use all of them for the combo, it doesn't really matter in the long run because they usually have cool effects in the graveyard. What about a deck that is like a more controlling strategy, a back row deck instead of a monster deck? Well, just a few weeks ago at the 3v3 YCS in Lima, Gally, one of the world's best players who's actually been to the World Championship four times and even won it back in 2010, he actually played True Dracos and he played it with, yes, three copies of Into the Void. The reasoning is pretty similar. You don't really have any hand traps in that deck and it's really cool, especially in a deck like True Dracos because not only do you have Into the Void, which obviously encourages you not to have a hand, but you already are playing three copies of Card of Demise, which has the exact same drawback. By playing Card of Demise and Into the Void, you're sort of doubling down on not having any cards in your hand during the end phase, and it seems to work for a lot of True Deco players, obviously, to have Card of Demise in their deck, so it's the natural progression to also play three copies of Into the Void. And then finally, the third deck is back to a true combo deck, and that is Pendulums, especially with the Endymion support, all these spell counter cards, because in that deck, not only are you increasing consistency for all the other reasons we've talked about in today's video, but you're also putting spell counters on your cards, which can be super valuable in the early game when you're trying to set up your combos. It's very reminiscent to why Upstart Goblin is commonly played in almost every single Skyscraker deck list. Yes, the one draw is valuable, but putting that extra spell card in Grave to potentially get three spell cards in Grave and unlock your crazy abilities is a huge upside of playing a card like Upstart Goblin. And while I couldn't really suggest playing Into the Void in your average Skyscraker deck list, I would just like to point out here that the first place YCS London list did play three copies of Carded Demise. That has a very similar drawback that you discard your hand during the end phase, but it gives you three draws instead of just the one, so that's why it was so good in that strategy. Even in that deck though, with three copies of Demise, he did not choose to play any copies of Into the Void, so it might not be that good in a Sky Striker deck. So if you're thinking about playing Into the Void and whatever strategy you want to, you really got to think about, okay, how many cards do I usually have in my hand after my first turn? Because Into the Void requires you to be playing a very specific strategy. You have to be playing a deck that needs no cards in the hand during the end phase, which in a lot of cases will be a big combo deck, but as true Dracos has sort of proven at the 3v3 YCS, it doesn't always have to be a combo deck, and I think that the natural fit between Card of Demise and Into the Void is really intriguing. We didn't see it actually be played at that YCS London first place deck list, but I think beyond that, in true Dracos, it'll be interesting to see if more and more people start playing Into the Void just to make their deck count even smaller. Decks like Orcus and Salamangrades don't really want to play Into the Void, even though they do have some pretty strong graveyard effects, not only because they obviously pretty much all play hand traps in their main and side decks, but also because they don't put all of their cards on the field on the first turn. They leave a lot of cards in their hand for future combos. But let me remind you something that I said at the beginning, and that's that one of the biggest downsides of Into the Void isn't so much the end phase discard effect, which you can always pretty much play around in whatever decks you're using the card, but actually just the activation requirement in the first place. Having three cards in your hand might not sound that hard, but after turn one, especially if you're playing a big combo deck, you're not necessarily going to have three cards in your hand, including the Into the Void, especially if your opponent breaks your board and you don't have like more than one card in your hand. If you top deck that Into the Void, it's basically just a dead card. This is one of the big areas where Upstart Goblin really does shine more than Into the Void, just because you can always activate it. You never have to pay any life points. You never have to have any activation requirements. But with Into the Void, you're not always necessarily going to have those two other cards in your hand when you draw it, especially if you use all the cards in your hand on the very first first turn. So generally speaking, in the decks that are playing Into the Void, you don't want to play for too long because it pretty much just gets worse and worse as the game goes on. It just becomes a worse top deck compared to other cards in your deck. I hope you guys learned something along the way about why some decks
decks are suddenly playing into the void. I think it could fit into so many other decks, especially looking forward as we get more and more combo decks. Anyway, though, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about this card and make sure, like I said at the beginning, if you would like to purchase into the void or any other cards for your decks, make sure to use that link in the description below to tstplayer.com. Anyway, though, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.